Welcome back to the channel, lads and ladies, and welcome to my first match in the F11. And I've got to say, I have really enjoyed this plane for the total of two matches that I've played it. So, it's been a long grind, and I bought out the last air task and the last tank task just because I wanted to focus on my everyday task of caring for my children and I was very very tired today. I've only bought three stars during this event and I've ground out all of the reward vehicles so hooray. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do with that USSR naval vessel but I'm very very pleased with the F-11. It's a beautiful jet. It is extremely stable in the air. Uh, there's no point where your rudder feels useless. The, the vertical stabilizer is fantastic. In fact, it has a fuel tank in that vertical stab, so I don't think... I've seen an aircraft that has that before. I could be mistaken. I, I get confused sometimes, but I can see why this would be a Blue Angels favorite airplane. It's just absolutely gorgeous. There's something about this plane. It's a very elegant design. Just great proportions, slim, sleek, rolls over quickly, everything you'd look for. In a, <laughs> in a jet, in a jet, and uh, it's got some good pushing as well, especially for a 9.0. I suspect that this jet is good enough that it can go up in battle rating. I'm running, I think, what is it? Well, you can see half an hour of fuel, and we are going to burn through that somewhat quickly, but this is a match full of of giddy F-11 pilots like myself, the likelihood that they're not experienced at high-tier jet gameplay is fairly high for most of them, and you're going to see some bad behavior, both from myself, because I am not a high-tier jets guy at all. I spent a little bit of time in the Phantom, and it was sort of like... It was like pulling candy teeth. It was a little bit painful, entirely unnecessary, much like that mind's maneuvers. <laughs> I'm going to count that as a kill. Um, and a little bit fun at the same time. So, what's the deal with this jet? I just absolutely love it. The looks alone are enough for me. That's really what I'm interested in. And get blapped, please? Yes. Yes, indeed. Did he wing rip while he went into an uncontrolled spin? That's pretty sexy. Anyway, I think that missile was meant for me, but didn't connect, so I'm happy. And G91, yes, yes, uh, critical hit, I'll take it. I have my convergence set to 600, and that might not be enough for jets. I changed it in my next match, which you won't be seeing, but I had similar results to this one. You can see that I kept my speed up for most of this fight, and already it's almost over. Now my team has significantly more jets in the air than the enemy, and that's the last of my real contribution to this match, so let's move on to something else. And what I have lined up for you today is a couple of replays. So, first off, uh, an old salt on the channel, it feels like that. Ozzy actually hasn't been around as long as I think he has, but he just, he just belongs so much over on the Toshio Thunder Discord, link in the description below, you're definitely invited, um, that it just, it feels like he's been around forever, he's definitely one of us, and he usually sends me some pretty good ground forces videos and some pretty good aircraft videos and I think that 
he's probably a better pilot in general than he is a tanks guy. But he's going to have an incredible and entertaining match today. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Notice that he has 15 APHE Soviet babies loaded and ready to disperse their innards explosively inside enemy tanks. I'm not sure why I chose that imagery, but it probably has to do with the fact that I've been wiping butts and shoving bottles into mouth holes all day today, and I pray I haven't gotten confused in the process. Anyway, <laughs> my three-year-old Brooklyn, also known, formerly known, I suppose, as Tank Baby, now the Tank Toddler, uh, she is very very self-motivated. She does not need me to tell her what to do. She already has plans. Thank you very much. And her her new catchphrase is Daddy No. <laughs> Which means she's thought of something better, so I should just cancel whatever I just told her to do. That doesn't work out very well, but uh, she tries. She doesn't even ask most of the time though she's just got things to do why do I mention that you can see some TP mounted on the back of this tank as uh, Ozzy causes some significant emotional events within that Sherman if not significant post penetration damage even no post pen uh, but we got some TP on the side of this tank as you do Gaijin taking advantage of the hysteria and selling digital TP, it'll never run out, but uh, it won't wipe you out either. Where was I going? Brooklyn has her own ideas about things, as most kids do. The less you know, the more you know. And uh, she's figured out how to poop. Okay, track with me here. Maybe, you know, just... Just bear with me. I'm very proud of her for going poo poo in her little potty. That's fantastic. She even does it all on her own. And then she tells no one what she's done. She grabs handfuls and handfuls of toilet paper and I pray she doesn't seriously try to wipe because I don't want to know where the poop is in that massive TP. I'm just going to pretend there's none and throw it in the toilet. And uh, then she just leaves. <laughs> she, she's usually not clean after that process. So I've got to figure out that she went poop. I've got to clean her little toilet because her little sister will play in the little potty. So far praise the lord we've avoided a situation brownie but she has splashed in the pee and giggled and i can hear it splashing around and i go in there and i see exactly what you'd think i see a tiny one and a half year old little chonkster with pee splatters all around her little baby like body and a look of pure joy and ecstasy on her face. Gross. <laughs> so, yeah, I've cleaned that up a few times. So, potty training, you know, this is my life. It's bottles, it's diapers, it's potty training, it's, uh, it's an absolute blast. And it's a lot less of making YouTube videos than it was before, which is really too bad because I feel like I'm getting better at it, especially with some of the editing uh, techniques I've sort of picked up lately. I'm not, I'm not a great YouTube video maker, but I do make a lot of videos just because I love what I do. And maybe, since this is a replay video, I could talk a little bit about what's happening, but it's pretty self-apparent. So far, Ozzy has played this, what is this, a uh, SU-76 or something? It doesn't, is that a SU-76? You know, I really should know these things, but I like to engage with the audience. So, 
Maybe you could tell me what, what the heck I'm looking at here. <laughs> oh, right. Another Soviet box tank that's completely derpy and silly and shouldn't do well at all. And what Ozzy has been doing is what I tend to see him doing, which is reasonably defensive gameplay and not taking extreme risks or exposing himself more than he needs to. He has a similar playstyle to the one that I tend to default to until I get more confident with my vehicles and start taking more risks, or the one I fall back on when I get too cocky and I get blapped in the face, sides, or booty for my arrogance. And yet, Ozzy, now choosing to reposition somewhere toward the C point, I suppose, and suffering from the Vaseline application that Gaijin liberally spread along the tracks of all their tanks instead of fixing a few small map issues with people being able to go out of the desired play area. Is there is there some mechanic that people that Gaijin could use to keep people out of an undesirable area or to punish them for going there? Ah doesn't matter. Let's just make every vehicle in the game have worse traction. That's not going to have any secondary issues with huge, massive, and numerous problems with map design because of that adjustment. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> anyway, I don't think nerfing the traction on everything twice, by the way, uh, is such a good idea. The first time, people didn't really notice it. Uh, the second time, it was very noticeable. And I think it really took away uh, some of the joy of doing just a little bit of light mountain goading. You know, the fun stuff. And uh, the map design definitely seemed to favor that. And that's uh, a lot less possible now, although I did see an M22 Locust in the Forbidden uh, Zone on, what is it, uh, is it Sinai? It's one of those sand maps. I can't be bothered. Anyway, where do we go from here? Well, we're capturing the sea point and ammunition count somewhat low, but still manageable. And hey, you've heard me talk about his ammunition count twice. That's a hint of things to come. The B1 going up in battle rating once again. The B1 BIS, uh, the one we saw over there, going up to a, what is it, a 2.7 battle rating, putting it at the same BR as the M3, which really has a better turret gun and a better hull gun, as well as significantly better performance for both, uh, albeit less effective armor. So that'll be kind of interesting to see how the B1 BIS fares in that environment. I think it'll be okay. And it sort of fits the trend in War Thunder over the years of vehicles with effective armor consistently going up in battle rating. There's, it's just really difficult to counter effective armor. And it's something that can be done by a skilled player that knows what they're doing fairly reliably and consistently, but the fact is, if you don't balance War Thunder with the average player in mind, then it's going to be more unbalanced than it is balanced. And, you know, War Thunder is, I like to think of it as a sandbox more than a competitive game and if you really feel very competitive this game is extremely frustrating so stop it get help <laughs> but uh, Michael Jordan as an example the greatest of all-time basket players and an insanely competitive man you can't just tell him to stop being competitive it's like telling someone to stop breathing or a Labrador to stop jumping into puddles of water. It's just not going to happen. So don't bang your head against a wall. Instead, 
embrace nature, and maybe, maybe that means that you play a game other than War Thunder, but maybe it means that you limit yourself to areas of War Thunder that are a little bit better balanced. And even though the competition isn't so fierce down here, low tier really is generally one of those places and you could complain about things like the german 20 mil that can shred things but uh, everything it's mounted on has its own drawbacks and it might not even be the most deadly gun at the tiers that you find it uh, the american 37 a strong contender especially in stabilized mountings and uh, this here 76 on uh, yet another hot box of USSR trash tank design <laughs> and I say that in the most loving way possible uh, the idea that they just kind of scrap every other desirable feature of an armored vehicle and include only what is absolutely necessary thank you very much that's something that has been serving the Russian people well in their armor design department for quite some time and I don't see it changing anytime soon. We'll have to wait until, you know, oh wait, no, that's already happened where a dozen NATO designed or utilized tanks would just wipe the field with, oh, say 200 Egyptian whatever skillets that don't have op proper optics. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that that's already happened. But, you know, that was in Israel, so it doesn't really count because Israel's not able to lose a war. So, <laughs> what else are we looking at here? Let's get back to the action before, uh, before I appear a little bit too political here. M3 getting taken down nicely by a side shot, and that really looked a lot more center mass than the hit cam told us it was but uh, maybe my elven eyes deceive me I'm, I'm sort of sorting pixels from fly guts at this point on my tv so you never know oh third ammo warning we are bone dry that's uh that's not so great, especially as uh, Yuri has actually finished his bottle of vodka, so it can't be loaded into the cannon and used as an emergency high explosive round either. And we're somewhat high centered on a rock that barely shows up on the map at all, or in the view at all. Again, Gaijin map design. Best map design, comrade. <laughs> so... Ozzy is a lucky little mantis. He must have been saying his prayers. As uh, the only enemy in the area, a uh, crippled M3 gets taken down by a teammate and he's now able to capture a zone for the third time and possibly, potentially, uh, get some ammunition back. I kind of thought it would be cool if something like a helicopter could carry a box of supplies and then drop it somewhere on the battlefield. There used to be a D point in War Thunder before it was just a meme and it would show up on I think just one maybe two maps in the middle of a match and you could capture it to drain some victory points from the enemy team. And, I don't know, that, that feature seemed a little bit unbalanced because whoever was controlling the field in general would always have access to it. And it was sort of one of those things that made your team lose harder if you were already losing. So that's, that's just not fun. You know, if you're going to include a late game or a late match mechanic... It, it's better if it's something that gives a small advantage to the losing team than if it's something that gives a fairly significant advantage to the team that's already winning. That's uh, that's an interesting concept. That's, that's a tricky thing to, to tack down. So uh, thus the D point is nothing more than a meme today. You are encouraged to encourage others to attack 
or defend such a zone and possibly respond that you're getting down in response. But that's just my own favorite flavor text. And is that? Yes, it's the American doppelganger, <laughs> the little two turret. Uh, what is that thing? It's a, it's a cavalry uh, armored car. I guess they weren't allowed to have tanks you see and they weren't allowed to have proper cannons so machine gun only but at this BR the uh, M2 Browning heavy barrel machine gun has a decent amount of armor pen easily capable of dealing with something like Ozzy Mantis's uh, hot communist box I guess it's our hot tub comrade but uh, <laughs> but Ozzy had the jump on him and with a quick three kills he jumps up to nine kills and three base caps in a pure example of Soviet bias that can only be properly realized by the uh, that uh, hard bass ash that's beating out some some euro beats to his uh, to his tank tracks administrations there for its brief life and uh yeah i guess that's just a thing that happens for thunder replays lads and ladies trees obstacles and destructible terrain or destructible stuff does weird things uh especially in replays and another kill surviving a shot from whatever the heck Japanese useless early tank design that is it's not even fair to call it an early tank design it's more like the uh, the Chiha and the Chinu were basically Japan's only real mass-produced tanks if you can call them mass-produced and the rest is just kind of fantasies that weeaboos or sorry yeah weeaboos wish very very fervently were actually produced <laughs> it would be cool if japan had good tanks at some point but it took them a long time to get there and uh that's just the way things are suffice that they had a very effective air force and navy and uh, Japan can still be spicy in the game of War Thunder and honestly uh, Japan's early mid-tier tanks uh, around rank 3 uh, late rank 2 they start looking pretty good as soon as you get the high velocity 75 just like every other nation that uses one excuse me I gotta stop snarfing into the mic but I've got allergies and it just makes my nose like swell up Anyway, that was a swell match, <laughs> and Rose Hipsan now brings us another fantastic example of Russian Bliet bias. So, a little bit of shop talk. I'm very happy, as with every time, to get into making replay videos again. It's one of my favorite ways of including you all in what I'm doing. It's one of my favorite ways to reach out to new people because yeah, people come and go and people find other things to do. So I'm always looking to inject some new blood into the Toshio Thunder, excuse me, the Toshio Thunder Zone Discord. It's called the Thunder Zone, but I called it the Toshio Thunder Zone because, because I'm Toshio. <laughs> I say I say weeaboo and that I introduce myself as Toshio. My my name is not actually Toshio, just in case this is your first time watching uh, one of my videos. But also, I'm very tired. I think I've mentioned that. I'm raising three kids at the same time right now. That's very draining mentally. And I'm sort of under challenged physically right now. You know, I'm playing video games, I'm making YouTube videos, I'm holding a bottle for a baby, and uh, I'm sitting on my butt a lot. And that's not 
doing me any favors. I really should find more time to exercise. Uh, in fact, my favorite form of exercise, other than having my heart rate elevated by seeing uh, Mocha's very own Rose Hipson get three very quick kills in the IS-6. No! Four! My goodness, those sexy side shots on Tiger 2s are never, ever going to get old. And uh, I might have to consult my doctor if this thing lasts too long. But <laughs> what I was saying is I need to get out more. But, yeah, you know, it's kind of hard when you have three kids, especially little ones, especially during a pandemic. But I'm just making excuses. If I really wanted it, I could be outside. I could be one of those dads that's uh, just doing a brisk walk, the old power walk with a baby on your chest and two toddlers at your heels on little leashes or whatever. Maybe I could, you know, put them on a put them on a, a thread and then have that like around my wrist and just kind of yo-yo the toddlers while I'm walking. I don't know if that would be. I'm just I'm just spitballing here, I'm just being weird because I'm getting goofy. I'm getting exactly as tired and exhausted as it takes for me to get really stupid so <laughs> if you're a fan of my very very early videos where you can hear little little grub worm guppy in the background squeaking and squawking and doing her cute little sounds and attacking me oh man those early videos uh, I started this channel about three years ago and baby Brooklyn is in a lot of my videos and she's just freaking adorable and I was a goofy goofy guy because I was up at 3 a.m. because she she is of all of our kids the one who woke up the most during the night and she always wanted like two ounces of formula and that she was back down and she was gonna be back up again soon <laughs> and you know what she's still like that you put her down and she pops right back up because she's got stuff to do. <laughs> busy, busy little woman. But uh, yeah, I get silly. I get silly when I'm sleepy. And I haven't been mentioning much about what uh, Rose Ipson is doing as usual with my replay videos. But now he's at that point that I was really interested in seeing how it was going to turn out facing down a Ferdinand and what is that Tiger 2 T44 I can't quite tell I'm gonna go with the top oh well he dead now uh, he ain't gonna be in rush hour 3 but uh, a Ferdy I like to go for the hull cheeks of the Ferdy but that's a tricky shot uh, Rosehip instead goes for probably not the best angle on that angled 200 millimeters front plate and receives the kind of reward you would expect out of that owl over to the left uh, that 67 has the old heat fs dfsf dsapag rounds uh with a with a besh tipped applicator so you really got to watch out for those but uh jokes aside the is6 is one of those premium beasts that i have a ton of experience in from when it first came to the game, I ground out most of the USSR tree with just that vehicle, and I had an absolute blast doing it. I got so good with uh, the main gun that I could just I could just put around wherever I wanted to, and that alone makes the IS-6 really good. I mean, if you get really experienced with the tank and you don't even need to think about the armor because you shoot first, you hit, and you kill. And that's something you can definitely accomplish with the 122 on this thing. And it has one of the fastest reloads of any of the heavy tanks that get the 122. So it's very capable in terms of firepower. Now, is the 122 the meta cannon? No, it's not. It's got too long of a reload. It doesn't have the best armor pen, all things said and done. But its performance is very consistent and it's a lot more accurate in the game than maybe it should be but that's just fine because you need those shots to count now if you do slip through somebody's armor you got a pretty good chance of blowing them to kingdom come although 
if you barely squeeze through their armor, there have been several adjustments to tone down the amount of post-penetration damage that APHE rounds get, especially uh, when they barely manage to punch through some armor. So getting those shots on weak spots still matters, and I've already fallen behind on the fact that he's killed that elbow. He bounced the heat FS round off of his angled frontal plate, nicely played, and he went and killed another Tiger 2 just because he could. Tiger 2 versus IS-6 usually sees the IS-6 win. Uh, there's two things that can screw you over with that, and they will happen if you're facing an experienced uh, Tiger 2 player. One is getting your cannon barrel shot. Your cannon, or sorry, your muzzle break is a massive target, uh, if not the 122 in an angled uh, position is enough to cause you issues by itself. And I think what Rosipson is doing is a very tricky play here. He lets the Tiger 2 shoot him in the cannon barrel so that he can set up the kill for his teammate who completely comes through for him. Nicely done, IS-2. Hero brother. Nicely done. Anyway, that brings us to here and brings us to today where the IS-6 is still a Soviet biased machine even though it may have set itself on fire and killed its own driver in real life during testing because it's actually a death trap with not enough um, engine cooling or transmission cooling for its massive heat generating electric transmission. Uh, that's not the case in War Thunder. It's fantastic, and I hope your experience with this video has been fantastic. Thanks for joining me here late at night after uh, just a very long day, and I hope to see you in the future, in the next video, in the Thunder Zone. Link to the Discord in the description. Bye-bye!